we're doing today and uh, what we have done yesterday. So just let's get started and let's get into it and with everything looking up and uh, working. I think we can, we'll fastly get back into that. So let us switch to the scene. I hope this is the right scene. Um, <clears throat> And I hope you can see my browser. I will check it. Yes. So let us uh, do a quick a quick recap of day one, uh, day two. So we are already on day three today. The plan for today is uh, to continue on our time map where we uh, stopped yesterday um, with some really great progress and some really good success but of course there are some bugs in the map and, and we will see so let us kick it kick the day off with the recap of day two on day two we did a small recap of day one of course we created all our documents and uh, we had a, done a little bit of documentation on day one and then we were, were going over i can already start go dot uh, we were going over onto our Godot project and started with the time map. So let us just uh, look into it. That was our map. This was our tile object node we created. This was our map we created. These were the scripts we created with our JSON path. And uh, the result of yesterday was this. So we have a small, a, a tiny part of our map being rendered and some tiles are already placed correctly some are a little bit misplaced and we will fix it today but overall we have uh, done a rendering and we have done a map rendering and it's based on our json data and that is working fine so far so let us go back to this we can archive these cards we are on day three today and for today we would like to fix the drawing of the tiles some of the epsilon tiles are line off that's what i meant they are one by one off and we have to see what's happening there afterwards i would like to concentrate on the camera and we would like to implement the camera for our map so we are able to zoom and panning around and seeing a little bit more of the map we get rendered and afterwards we see what we can do in the next steps but i guess there's a lot of things missing we can do so let us go straight into the uh, coding also here i would like to archive all the finished cards so they don't interrupt us uh, i'm not sure if this was a good idea I think for the hero card it's better if we have also the <coughs> cards still shown. So our ticket is or our task is still the time map. We create the time map in Godot which is capable of storing different tiles, display them as our hex field map to its original version. We were actually on the create a map node. Then this node should work as a container for our tiles and draw the map based on the provided JSON. We have a variable for different JSON data to process the map. Let us see this. We have the JSON data, which stores our resource for the map. At the moment, we are not able to change it dynamically, but we will do this in the future. For now, we just focus on the first map. And so we have just the asset for the first map in here. So I would check it for now. No, I don't want to want to check it. So. A script which passes the JSON. Yeah, we have done a script yesterday which passes the JSON and fetches all the stuff for us and we are able to create the tiles. Create tile scene with the right texture and position. This is not done completely because the position isn't right yet. The texture is right, but the position we need to fix in a minute. We will do that. So afterwards, we want to clean up and refactor some code. Yeah, I think that's enough for it for now. So let us check this one. So let us see what's happening with the position. 
So we are in our tile system, <coughs> which we have on the scene. I will create a scene. So if you don't know what's the problem, actually here I can just tell you it because uh, yeah, we, we would need to open the reference image on our original version. But uh, these two tiles need to be one further down and this rock tile needs to be in yeah also one down so we have the zero one two three and at the four at the fourth line of the x coordinate we are one tile off um, let us just start up the old code as well so we can maybe check out this is just that uh, don't show this on startup a recent project gdx there it is we have the cell so the problem is why is it so i would just to be very very simple i just wanted to try if we could just do something like minus here and just restart it no okay so this is this is not the right call so then we need to understand what's the problem with the epsilon position i think the problem with the with the position is the rendering because yeah how to, how to how to explain it um libgdx rendering origin go dot rendering origin mm, that's not what i wanted to see uh, are here some pictures from libgdx no also not I think this one is it, what we need to understand. <clears throat> yeah, here here's the rendering coordinate system. So in libgdx, we have the position on zero, zero, and this should be the top or left corner top left or let's see range left corner is zero zero lower left corner is zero zero and upper right corner is one one okay so this is gda libgdx has the problem that we are starting on the lower left corner and now with godot we are working from the top left corner and this is i think why we got the problem <clears throat> because at the moment the cell tile becomes to the fourth line why is it wrong actually Okay, let us let us start uh, the other way around. We have the map here where we're just adding the child as the map. Okay, so <clears throat> let's begin with uh, another note here. I would say it's tile container. And then we do not add the child, we say something like on ready var tile container node 2d equals get node get node tile container. Um, 
I also like to have the code on top for the onready functions. Uh, then we have the GD style with two lines in between. And then we have around here the add child. And I would like to have the tile container add child instead of the main. Should not change anything. That's right. So then we add a camera node for now. And we go back into this because now with the camera node, we have the possibility to have a little, uh, another viewport. So we can look at the map from another viewport. And I would like to have it right now. Let's move the camera a little bit to the right and restart the map. So, and now we can see the actual issue. The issue is that The issue is that there is missing one tile. Yes, I know why. I know why. I know why. It has nothing to do with the with the tiles. It's about the ordering. It's about the ordering because we have a minus tile in it. So let us check it out and I will show you for better explaining. For better explaining, we look into the code. We have the JSON format, which is our, where I am, there I am. So we have our JSON data, which is here, and we have the map in it. And the map coordinate starts, we have the issue on the fourth index. And the problem on the fourth index is, that we have minus tiles. We already have them on the on the third index as well. We have a minus tile. And because of that, we just go through the iterator. And then we draw them. And the minus tile is drawn at last. But it's handled in our function the other way around. So we would need to have the minus one tile as the first one who's iterating through. Hmm. And that's, that's quite interesting because we now need to shift the index, the indexes here because he shouldn't start with the zero. Or isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's because I have two different uh, iterators here. I have just a numeric iterator for i and j, and I have the iterators in the index, and they are not sorted in the right way. I have no idea how I've solved this issue on the original one. Let us see. Let us see, where is it? This is the tile, this is that one, this is the bottom, that is creating the surroundings. Create, draw. Create raw tile. So I have also done it here, but we have done the key set and it's doing the iterator as well. Key set iterator. Get grid, get cell. So let us check in the grid. Where is my grid? Can't find it. It's in the map. The map should hold the grid. No, that's not the right grid. The 
Objects, the model objects, data, no, collect, no. Ah, I can't find it. Why I can't find it? Where is it? This is the map, this is the tile. This is just listen. Uh, let us see map. Game objects map. Here. There is the grid. Core directions, the grid. We have the grid, we have the cells, we have the keys. Ah, see. Here is the magic happen. That's what I was looking for. So we also do in the original code a sorting that the minus keys are on top. And uh, that is actually what we need to do now as well. Because we need to rearrange the order of the keys. <clears throat> Let's see if we get this easily done. Or better said, how we get that done. And we also do only do need that for the epsilon key, because the x key is already right. <laughs> but the epsilon key isn't. So, okay. Go dot four sorting array key. Sort dictionary list. We need to look that one up. Um, dictionary sort. No. Sort custom sort if it's an array, but I don't think we have an array there because it's a dictionary. Yeah, it's a dictionary. So, dictionary was right, but how can we sort that? Dictionary description. Values find key has key hash key is read only make read only. It seems for me that we don't have a sort function in there. It's a little bit unfortunate. Let's see. You can sort since it had no order. I sort the same. Yeah, what's that? That looks good for me. I'm going to the map. So our keys are json.map.x.keys. Keys sort. And let's give it another try. 
Now we should have an array with keys, which always shows that. And we go to the next breakpoint, and we have another keys on J1, which is the, actually the same. We have another one. And now the magic happens. Or not. Unfortunately not. <laughs> so I was awaiting that we have the minus keys now in here, but we haven't. It's just always 0 to 9, but it shouldn't be 0 to 9. Let us see if we are on the right place. We are on the map with the x value and x value is zero still ah, okay so that's the problem so we need to go a little bit further until the x value is something like three so now yeah and as you can see the keys are now sorted right so what we would like to do now is We don't iterate through this one. We iterate for key in keys. For key in keys and then fetch the key instead of this one. And of course, the epsilon isn't. That must be key as well. And let's give it a try. We remove the breakpoint. And it's looking fantastic. That looks good. We will the, remove the camera a little bit down I don't know which size the camera actually has uh, 350 let's take 500 and 500 no that's too much I like that so and now we can see the passage is here right but there is a problem <laughs> <laughs> I think we fixed the epsilon coordinates, but we have still an issue with the x coordinates. There's still something wrong with that one. The question is if this is also a problem with the epsilon coordinate. So let us get back with the zoom. Uh, what is if we take the zoom to 5, then it will be less. And if we take it to minus 10, 1, 2, 0 0.5. Let's take a look. Better, much better. So we can see more at the moment, but it isn't right. It isn't right. But I need to shut up the reference for now because I have no idea how it should look like. There is still one thing missing, I would say. Yeah, it looks quite differently. So in the original, we have these stones here. D1, 
these stones are right, this is right, this is right, and then it breaks completely <laughs> on this line. But it's also a problem of the epsilon coordinate again. But why? Yeah, I think we need to debug that one more time to see what's actually happening there. Because this is not right. It is the, sorry, I forgot to count it. It's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So let us go in here and we debug it with the X coordinate and we want x to 6. So, now we are on here on the 6. And let us see, what do we have for keys? Ah, here you can see the, the problem is the sorting again, because it sorts the minus one, minus two, minus three, and zero. And we need, uh, of course, it should be minus three, minus two, minus one, and then zero. So it's the problem of the sorting algorithm. Um, I'm not sure if he's counting them as integer or if it's in string can't tell me that but it's not a problem we need just need a custom sort um, let's see array and the custom sort or sort custom. So this is what we want. I think this is already the right one we need. So let us just copy here and then we say key sort custom, it's func a and b and we return a zero bigger this one. I actually would have thought that it's the normal sorting algorithm already, but let's check it out. So we need to go to x6 again. Click, 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 click. There we are. Ah, now we have it the other way around. So we need this one. And click, 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 click. Now it looks fine for me. So we have minus three, minus two, minus one, and that should be should do the trick. So let's see. Uh, we can go over there, over there, over there. But somehow it still looks not right for me. But I'm not sure. We we will double check. Let's double check the map. If we can. No computer. Don't. C 
come on, no, he don't want to start it up again. Ah, there it is. There it is. Sometimes it takes a while to start the thing up. So it looks right. Okay, so it was just a bad memory. So let us check. We have all the stones there. We have the water here. We have the trees over there. We have two tiles over here, over here, over here. And we have this sump. We have yeah, so for me in the first place, it looks everything correct. So we fixed that one. Pretty nice. So this is the sorting we need to do. And it's uh, uh, <coughs> the problem why we need the sorting. I will comment it here. We need the sorting here because the JSON provides wrong key order. Zero. One minus one. Instead, we need minus one, zero, one. So that's just for reference if we are looking back into the code why we do it here. Okay, so this is done. I would say we go here and say the position is right now. So let's go on on the next step. Implement camera. Panning zoom. Yeah, let's go on with that. We have already placed the camera. I will reset it to the original position and the original zooming. And now is the question with what we like to start. First, we add a new script, which is the camera script. Before we do that, we will rename it to our camera. And then we add a new script, which is placed in our scripts folder, time map camera script. This script extends from our camera to D. And what we now need are some listeners for our mouse input. For the zooming, we need the scroll wheel up and down, I would say. And for the panning, we need a drag. I'm not sure to do it at the moment, but we will see it. First, we can l have a look in our original code. There we have a listener like a map listener, map click handler it is. And I think on the click handler I have the different clicks, I have the different skills. I have the help click, action click, toggle units, check state, select unit, select base. I was sure there's also a zooming in here, but it seems not like it. Then we have somewhere a different listener. Mm. Yeah, the game gesture listener is this. this one is it. So I will take a short break. I'm back in a minute.
so I'm back. So what I've did in the original version, we have a gesture listener here, which actually is uh, listening on the different gestures. And now I would like to see if we can copy over some stuff. So let us start with the zooming. I think it's uh, more easy. Um, the zooming is a little bit dry and error now because first of all, we need to define a max distance and a min distance. On the original version, I had something like the scale factor and this is initial distance minus distance by 20,000. But since Godot is working differently, I don't think we can use with this value. So what I would like to do is we just have a var max zoom and I would just set it to free and we take min zoom and take it to 0 0.1 for now. So let us check these both values. We have this one, we have the camera. We go to the zoom and we say 0 0.1 so this one should be really big, uh, really small. And as you can see, it's much too small. So I would say we go with 0 0.5. And yeah, it could be maybe, maybe 0 0.3. As said, it's a little bit trial and error with what you like. I think this is quite small already. But I'm fine with that for now. And for the max, we took three. Three is really big. I'm not sure if you want to zoom in that far. So let us stick to two, sorry, script. So 2.5 and 0 0.3. So what we now need is we need to listen on our input, on the mouse input. And therefore, I need to look it up. Um, go dot four mouse input with the input handling using mouse input. So we have this input event. We can already copy that in GD script. We have the input if is mouse button. We don't want mouse button. We have to go to the scene project, project settings. Then we have input somewhere, input, input, input. No, this is mouse. Okay, they changed all this one. Uh, that's a little bit unfortunately because I found it so much easier in the old one. So let us see. Um, when the mouse mode is set to mouse mode captured event value, it's mouse motion, it's mouse event button, event mouse motion. So I think we need to take the event mouse motion. For the zoom. So let us uh, set a breakpoint here. Ah, this copy isn't, uh, isn't working, unfortunate. So let us just remove all of that. 
and then we just say like this and then we are already here because the event Ah, okay, the event doesn't tell us what event it is, unfortunately. Go dot four mouse Events are mouse button, but I don't want the button. I want to have the scrolling. Event is pressed. This is quite interesting that it's with the event is pressed. So I had expected something else that it's not a event mouse button uh, we will see event mouse button okay so if event is event mouse button let's see if we get there oh yes so it is actually so this is right, then let's copy this. And then we do something like if event button index equals button wheel down. I just write it even if it's I've copied just to make a muscle memory or the events. What we do need is to increase zoom and if event button index equals equals mouse button button down line up wheel up wheel up we want to zoom in. This is zoom in and this is zoom zoom out. Okay, that's everything we need for now. What I try to do now is I just do we have to zoom in the inspector on the camera and it's just called zoom, I think. Zoom is a vector two. I'm not sure why it's a vector 2 actually because it should be just one size but that's okay we can do zoom x plus no we want to zoom out zoom out is less that is minus Var zoom step is zero one uh, minus zoom step. I think we can also do something like vector two, and then we can do this. We will see. And if we want to increase it, we do the same the other way around. We break off the breakpoint. And as you can see, this is working, but now we need to min max because we don't want to zoom in or out endlessly. And for that we need to do zoom. There should be something like a clamp function. 
clamp. Let's look it up. This is the min vector and the max vector. Okay, so the min is on zoom out is the min zoom. This needs also to be a vector of two and the max is then zoom minus zoom step and the other way around on the max function we need the max zoom no we need the max ah, max zoom and it is the zoom plus zoom step think so let's see clamp base cannot convert argument to float yes because i had forget to set this as vector 2 doesn't work because we need to say this i think yes so now it's working or not no the max function isn't working the min function is working so this is our maximal distance this is working but on zoom in we have a problem that the zoom in is going more because the clamp is saying min and max the minimum i have to understand what i'm doing here Could be right actually. This is the minimum and this is the maximum. Or am I wrong? Uh, clamp returns a new vector with a clamp between the component min and max. I will see how I've done it here. I think there was also the max one and the min one. It should be fine actually. Let's let's do it with one five to have a better understanding. No, it doesn't clamp it. Why not? It shouldn't be zoom and the zoom step. It's min. Ah, okay, the min gets bigger than the maximum. I think. That's also not right. It's the min we need here.
problem is that this is not Is it maybe this one? No, no, he's jumping to it because the minimum is the maximum. The zoom in is uh, quite a bit more complicated. Let's see, we need to do it in our uh, The max zoom isn't working in this case. So, max, max zoom, zoom dot x. Plus zoom step. Actual zoom step. So take the minimum out of the max zoom step and the, and then we clamp it between. I think we don't even need it. And we can set the zoom to vector two. Actual zoom step. Let's test this one. Invalid operands float in vector two. Yes, of course. Ha. That does the trick. So where's the zoom now for this? We won't just have it to one. So now we can zoom in, zoom out, and everything is good. That's it. This one is working. I'm not actually too happy with this code for the zoom in, but it's working for now. I would love to have this also in the clamp function, but it isn't working because we need a min function. Mm, it's okay. It's fine for me. We can do it later. So we have the camera implemented and we have a zoom implemented. What we now want to do is a panning. I think panning will be a little bit more complicated. So let us see how I have implemented on the original version. We had the pan function and we had a handle drag function. I think we had also a pen start function. Do we have a pen start? No, just a stop. Scaling is false. Return false. 
where is pen stop actually called? Never. Handle drag. Set camera point, translate it. Set camera point. Mouse moved. Mouse moved, mouse moved, get chords, target cell. Touch up, touch down. Oh, these are all the gesture listeners. We don't need them. What we need is the panning. The panning was init drag. Handle drag. So also there, I think we can't use too much of the code we had in the original version because it's uh, the listener or the gesture listener in the original version. It's working a little bit differently. And what we need to do in Godot is we need a mouse motion event here. Or better said, we need a if event button index mouse button left and event is released no this is good if event is released pen panning is false if event is pressed panning is true Var panning is bool, it's false. And then we say if event is input mouse motion, <coughs> if yeah, is yeah, if panning. So what we're trying to achieve now is we look if the mouse is moved and panning is activated, then we would like to move the camera accordingly by position. So I would say position No, it's not that easy. I have to look back into the go dot uh, mouse input. Motion add event position start. Event relative. When the mouse mode is set to capture the event position value from a center of the screen, use event relative instead of position. And process mouse go to four implement. So we have to look up that, but I have to take another short break. I'm sorry for that. Be right back.
So, sorry, I'm back. So I think it's pretty much pretty easy. If we uh, start the panning, we also need to save us the pan start position. And we take just the event position. We need another pan start position. This is vector two. And then when we are panning, we are just say, the distance is the start position and the actual position. So what I want to have is I think minus the event position now. And this gives us the translates the relative position. So let's name this relative position is the pen start position minus the event position. And then we just say our position, this is the camera position, we want to add the relative position. So let us test it. Okay. This is not working. So we just uh, do this and see what we get here. So what I get is the relative position is minus minus 500 and the pen start position is zero zero. Yeah, okay, I see why. <laughs> because pen start should be on is pressed not on releasing and then we have a pen start position and then we have it and it's too fast no it's working a little bit, but not good. Because why? Because it's too fast. So let's check how I handled this one in the original code. Because we need to translate the delta. And I've taken the 1.5 minus scale factor. Now I think what I'm doing wrong is, is the position. Let us think about it, what I'm doing now. With each dragging, we get a more relative position and we just add it all the time. I need to Understand it's it's right from the idea behind it, but it's much too fast caused by the relative position.
because I think what we would like to do is instead of <laughs> giving the position over there I think we need also to say the pen start position is then the event position. Yes. This was it. I really like it. <laughs> How these small changes actually change uh, the complete behavior of this uh, function. And uh, it's going into the right direction afterwards. It's so cool. So this is the scrolling I would like to have. And now we can pan around. We can also zoom out. The panning is working. We can zoom in. And the panning is working. And also by the zooming and the zoom out, we have another speed of panning, of course, because if it's smaller, then the panning is slower. If we are there, the panning is also a little bit faster. So. I think this is quite cool already. I think the zoom out is too too small. So let us uh, tweak them a little bit. We can also do something like um, uh, 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 export. and export these both. <coughs> what this allows us is then we can go into the map and we have, no, we can go into the camera and then we have here now the max zoom and the min zoom and now we can uh, directly doing changes here and we don't need it to do in the code anymore. And then we can look if this is better. So I just would stick to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. But if you give uh, the default values here already, then of course it makes no sense. So normally you know it, you wouldn't do this and would just say this. And then you set it right here to 0 0.5 and but this goes to personal preference. If you would like to change the attributes or the variables in the inspector and the editor itself, or if you would like to do it in the code. I'm not sure about it because I always think the default values here are much better because if I not do it, I would lose track of these uh, numbers. I mean, now anything. It's cool to have it in the editor because anyone who is not the coding experience can tweak around with those numbers. But I think the default numbers should be our right numbers because then you can mess around with them, but you don't lose actually the right numbers. Yeah, I would say we can go to zero five four. I would also adjust the zoom step maybe to zero dot five. This is also a little bit of tweaking and uh, just uh, test and look what what you like. For the zooming speed and the steps, I think these steps are quite good. Feels okay. So let us uh, say this is done. We have the panning. 
we have the zoom one thing i would like to add to the camera is uh, how is it called um, i have no idea how it's called what i want to achieve is i dislike that we can scroll out of the map right now so i would like to give it some border frames or whatever give it constraints border to not zoom or pan away so this should be also pretty simple because in the panning we just need to make sure that the position we have here is again clamped between the min and the max value. I think clamp is not the right function. There must be another function which actually accepts three params. Because I want a value. A minimum and a maximum. And in the clamp function, we can just pass the min and the max. And I think that's not the right approach. Um, <laughs> there's a doc for it, use it. Uh, the clamp function zero 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 delta zero. Okay, the problem seems to be on the vector clamp function. Um, if I see it correctly, so there is a clamp, and this has the value minimum and maximum, but this only accepts. No, it also accepts. Ah, okay. So yeah, now we have it. So what we would like to do is is the position is clamp um, min map position max map position and our position plus relative position so this is it and this is also the problem we had here on on the actual zooming so we can also improve the zooming in a minute well, why what what's the problem here now oh there there is the problem so now we don't have the min position and the max position. So min map position needs to be vector two. And we have a max map position, which is also vector two. To set these, It's quite complicated to, to set the frame constraints for that because we need to set the offset. And this depends a little bit on the on the drag center. Uh -huh. 
So this is the offset. Yeah, the position is also zero zero. So it's centered. Can we change the center point? Fix top left. So this one is maybe what I would like to have. This doesn't work because we have now script problem. And then we can say the min map position is vector two, zero, zero. And the max we need to calculate it. Because if we go here and we say, uh, we have the position of 500, it's moved over there. Okay, so let us just take some fiction values to just test the concept. So what we are now trying to do is we can now move it around. Let's see a problem, see a problem there, see the problem there. Okay, that doesn't work. This doesn't work because we need this in a little bit different way. I've done it in the original way with let's see, let's see. I was think it was in this zoom. with the set camera point. Max width, min width. Context game, check if it's already visible. The min height and the min width. And then we had a max height and a max width. Let's see. And this is calculated by the tiles. Yeah, okay, so actually it's the same as I would like to have. But we need to do it a little bit differently. Because the min map position is zero and zero and the max is zero and zero but it doesn't work with the clamp position because we need to clamp the position x with position x and position x and x and x and then we need to set the position epsilon with the same actually, but with the epsilon. And this allows it to have it uh, separated. And now we can drag around here. And as you can see, we have now the border that the min position is over there. But the problem is it doesn't look great because uh, this tile is also rendered a little bit in the uh, offset. This is because we don't start because we start at the zero zero. So what we need is half a tile on top and half a tile on left at least. And this is this is minus 28, minus 28. And this also makes our camera starting position to minus 28, minus 28. And now we are, should be fine. 
Now it's even it's now better because in on top it's a little bit less than minus twenty eight. They would like to have this also on the left side. So we take minus nine two. Then I think yeah, it's also I have to adjust the position at the start of the camera. So it's a little bit daunting today. It's it's a lot of tweaking with numbers and uh, yeah, it's actually already a lot of detailed work I I do at the moment. So just take the let's take the time and do a little recap out of that what we've do what we've done so far. So for today, we fixed our tiling rendering issue so the map is now looking in the right place all tiles are in the right place and uh, we have the right map created out of our JSON and afterwards I added a camera which is uh, now able to drag and to zoom in and out the problem with the zooming now I have is that it's now zooming on the top left and I dislike that. That's because I have set the fixed top left point instead of the drag center. That we should fix. So we say switch camera drag to center again. This makes the constraints a little bit harder to calculate. Yeah, because when we have the center of the map, we need to uh, take into account how much of a viewport we have on the camera and then we need to add it to the constraints. But uh, yeah, let's let's not focus with that. So these are two different problems we have right now. If one is panning and the other one is zooming. So let us focus on the panning right now. We are starting on the top left and we have now a little bit of uh, space here. I think it makes everything a little bit smoother. When we are done with the map one day, uh, we will also have, of course, here the water shader. So it will look more like water. I will also give it even more or I would like to give it even more space to let it breathe a little bit like that. Oh, damn, I need to adjust this one accordingly. Uh, we can do it actually on hand. Uh, let's do it like that. Let's do this and let's set the initial position is the minimum map position. Much easier. <laughs> so now we have some space where the tiles can actually breath a little bit here. So the, the minimum map position is already working because we have it fixed to the point um, I have set it and we can't go further to the left and we can't go further to the top. What we now can do is we can go to the bottom and to the right too much endlessly because I've just set it to 1500 which is wrong because we need to uh, so we need to calculate the max panning in the first place we have done it in the original by the by the count get grid count X count epsilon so let me see we can't even know it right here because we have just the position and we have no reference to our camera right now 
this is the input, this is the panning. So what we need to do now is we need to set the max panning, the max uh, map position, and we know it out of our map because the map, when the map is ready, it's parsing the JSON. And then we can say uh, here, uh, max map position is a vector two. No, yeah, right. It's a vector two max map position with uh, zero dot zero, and then we go right here on the end and say um, the max map position epsilon is max j or map x and map max uh, max map position x is max y or max map position x. So what I'm doing here is we, we are looping over our JSON and we are creating the tiles and the uh, iterators, the J and the I is defining how much X cells we have. This is the, the I and then we have the J which is referencing to how much epsilon cells we have. And into each iteration we just say the max map position equals to these to the highest uh, number even ourself if ourself is already higher then we take this otherwise we take the iterator this ends up in the end of the pass function and there we have the greatest x number and the great the biggest epsilon number and therefore we can then say on ready we have our map. No, we have our camera. And this is the camera node. And it's get node camera, of course. And then we can say camera set max now we if we use we could use the getter or setter. We can say the max map position is max map position. But even that is not true because we say vector two because we need to say map you know, max map position x and we need also to take into account the tile size. So we have epsilon and x and then after the parsing we have set it here to the camera and then we can say we have the position set and this and now it should work. Or dust. <laughs> okay, it doesn't. Unfortunately. So let us see what we are getting here. We are getting max map position 10 and 10. And 10 multiplied by 256. Yeah, okay, I know the problem. The problem is the scaling because we are working with a different scaling and we have to do I think we have to divide it by 2. And then we are getting 
a lesser value, but also that, as you can see, is not the right value. And this is because of the isometric hexagons, because the isometric hexagons aren't the same width and the same height because they have a different width and they have a different height. So let us just for this calculation check into the original code. And there you can see for the max width, I have taken the count of the X value and have taken the tile size, which is in my case, tile dot tile size, it's 0 0.5, so it's the uh, 128, and then I have multiplied it with 7.5 because we just want a yeah we just want a third of the tile size and then we just added a corner afterwards. Oh, it's, it's a little bit tricky. So the map size is by 7.5 plus tile size <coughs> divided by 4. And let's see, this should be the right width. <laughs> Uh, more or less. I think this one is already off. Can take this down. So we need to see. I've just here. No, it's not correct. Maybe it's minus tile size by 4 by 2 <laughs> I just try to figure it out so I would say this is the right call for now so now we have the same space I think on the right side and on the left side so why it is so complicated? Because we have a we have a tile which is uh, two hundred fifty six pixel wide, but because we have this hexagon isometric view, every second line of our epsilon line is just not the same width. So we just take the uh, We take not the half size, we take a, a three quarter size of the, each tile. And we need to uh, we need to subtract the tile size at the end because our starting point in the map. Sorry, this is the map. No, I don't want the map, I want the camera because the starting point in the camera is 256. if that makes sense. I have no idea if it makes sense, but it's working. So we need to adjust the, yeah, and we need to adjust the max map position based on the max X cells and max epsilon cells. So this was the X uh, definition. I'm not sure if Go dot allows us to be like that, but I think it's a little bit easier to read. So now we need to do the same for the epsilon. And on the epsilon, we have taken the count of the epsilon and multiplied it by the half of the tile size. We have done that already and we are getting but too much down here. 
Yeah, it's it's much too far away. It's so far. I need to I need to calculate. So we have ten by fifty six. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, actually, that should be right. But I think we also need to do the double one here. Yeah, that's right. And then we need to add this base we have also added on top, which is this base. I think it's uh, one tile, so it's half a tile. So for that, we need to add tile size divided by four, just as spacer. Yes, so that's the panning with the border around the camera. So we now have a camera which is uh, actually uh, disallowed to go farther away from our map as it should. And the problem we now have only is with the zooming in on the left and the right there it's also a problem and then you can see the zooming is also taking the space a little bit into account for the panning that that is another problem because if we are now zoomed out we of course have uh, another scale factor and this changes the map position for the border panning that i was also <laughs> struggling with in the original version that's why we have the max width and max height and it's uh, i need to see that's the translate camera point yeah, that's why we take the scale factor into account here. With the zoom, yeah, that's right. We need to add the scaling as well for the dragging. Okay, but what would I like to do is I would like to set it to drag center again. And then we have now the problem that it's off because now we have to go out of the center. Now it's the zooming working, but the panning not anymore because we have set the panning in the camera for our point on the top left. And now we need to change it. Therefore, we need to know how big the camera is. Mm, let us lock up. I just. Uh, search camera to the object. The camera to the object has the offset, has the zoom, has a custom viewport. Mm -hmm. So what I try to uh, research or what I try to understand is the viewport canvas. But I think we can get it with get viewport in canvas transfer viewport. So let us see. 
let us see here we say viewport is get viewport and we make a breakpoint and we've shot it up and then we see viewport not declared I'm sorry and then we have the viewport which is actually an object and it has the size ah, okay so therefore it's pretty easy to set the min position because the min position needs to be a vector 2 with the min map position x and min map position epsilon. This is what we have done before and this is what we what works when oh the bell is ringing. One moment I need to break here. Be right back. So sorry, that was the telephone call I was referring to at the start. So we needed to take a break. So nevertheless, the time is uh, nearly finished already. We have five minutes left. 
I need to catch up where we have stopped. So I would, yeah, I would like to have the camera centered. So we needed to set the minimum map position. This was working with the X and the Epsilon in the top left corner. Now we have the map centered. This means we need to adjust the position a little bit with yeah, with the, with the top left as origin. And therefore we take get viewport size dot x by divided by two and get viewport size dot epsilon divided by two. Hopefully we will see where we start. Yeah, I think it, this looks right. <laughs> But also we have the problem now with the panning. But as you can see, as you can see, the start position now for the map is right because we now what we now did is we just moved the uh, top left to the center and moved the camera to this position that we have a centered map. Um, what we need to do is we need this calculation to do for the min map position. And then afterwards we set the position on the min map position. So this means we don't have, yeah, we have this like that, <laughs> like that. And then we should be also to pan here in the right place. Yeah, that's also right. And now we have the problem with the panning that we are not getting far enough to the right and not getting far enough to the bottom. And that also depends on the problem with the with the viewport. And now we came into the max map position and this is the problem on the map. We just set the max position here. And what we need to do is we need to have a setter for set max map position. And then we give the vector 2 with this one. And therefore we add the camera and have the function with this and we get the max position, which is a vector 2. And therefore we need to set our max position is a vector 2 with max position x plus, and now we need to, to do the same as in the min port, we need to get the viewport size x divided by 2 and we need to set the max map position epsilon plus get viewport epsilon divided by 2 hopefully so let's us check if i've done it correctly no because invalid get epsilon on window because there is the size missing i'm sorry and this was not right because in this way we need to do a minus instead of the plus no <laughs> no it's not right why it's not right what i'm doing wrong now let me see what do what do we get here we get the max position is 800. No, no, of course, of course, we need to, I don't think we need this divided by two because we are in the max position. <coughs> there, it's, it's the other way around, actually. Yeah, it's the other way around. We actually don't need the max position cat go away um, it's the other way around than the min position by the min position we need the half of the viewport on the max position we even need more than the viewport itself we need to multiplicate it with 1.5 for more view space as you can see ah, it's not working 100% because we also would need to 
we also need to add the min map position into account <laughs> but the original I think the original so this needs I, I just uh, let me just test it so I would say we need to add this into account as well and on this we need to take this into the account and then we are right here and on the bottom it's uh, a plus of the half size yeah, it's, it's a lot of fiddling around here and I'm not really happy with that we need to figure it out with the with the right values and the mathematics behind it so this this is right and this one is one tile too much so this one is just uh, this and then it should be fine no what the fuck so if this is even too much is it too much? yeah it is too much and it's even 64 again another but uh, the, it's 320 320 yeah that's right so uh yeah i just fiddling around with the with these numbers i have to clean it up tomorrow we are done for today unfortunately the time was uh, flying by again and i had to do a lot of breaks i apologize for that but let us do the quick recap we have for now we have a map tile we have the tile map which is drawing correctly in every aspect of the json we are able to panning around we are able to drag and drop <laughs> drag around we are able to zoom in and as you can see when we are zoomed uh, the panning isn't working quite correctly because we need to take the scale factor also into account that we need to take away for tomorrow for the uh, camera settings um, yeah and that's actually it what we have done for today give it a constraints border to not zoom or pan away switch to center this makes it a little bit harder to calculate it's right um, constraints constraints are failing on different zoom modes but yeah today it was a little bit daunting and a little bit hard to fiddle out all the stuff of the camera and of the, uh, of the zooming and stuff like that but unfortunately this this is always if you want if you want to set up the camera in first place this is uh, the groundwork actually of the basic tile map what we do yeah what, what what we are doing now this is this is the groundwork and, and it can be hard and it can be daunting and it can be struggling with it but once this stuff is done everything builds on top of it so actually we need to to spend some time to get the basics working to have a good groundwork because i don't want to yeah i want to write this once and it should work and we don't want to uh fiddle there around again so for that we need to take our time and create the, the right uh, mouse events and the right handlers for all the stuff because the next step would be to read in another map maybe the map 2 or the map 3 or whatever and everything should work then i don't want to have any bugs or things to create with each new map we load into because i just want to write this stuff once and then it should work within the next maps as well and if the groundwork is done correctly we then have the fundamentals to go on 
So let us see for today which day three we fix the drawing tiles. Uh, some epsilon tiles were off the line and find out what's happening. We implemented the zoom in and out on the map and we implemented the scrolling by dragging the map around. So planning next steps is a little bit, yeah, it's also done planning next steps because we've done, uh, we have done the bug fixing for tomorrow or better said we now know what we have to do for tomorrow um let's do as the last step for today we finish day three and we create for tomorrow twitch day four um, i just uh, copy it over so let us do this as the last task for today tomorrow is day four and we will finalize implementation of zooming and panning afterwards starting with map objects so i just uh, say that's it for this and uh, for the task we again to take this one in um, fix panning yeah. implement zoom and panning correctly to the time map start with the implementation of map objects so this will be another meter uh, change because in the maps we can have objects on the map so we will create another layer and for that we will have to start with the implementation so i hope you enjoyed it today even if it was a little bit a lot of breaks i have to take uh, there was a little bit struggling there was a little bit research involved but actually that's that's the that's the usual life as game developer we have uh, days which are working quite well we have days which are a little bit more struggling and um, yeah we have to to get <laughs> rid of both and uh, we have to live in both worlds and so i think we also make a, a good progress today i will upload the video to youtube as usual you can look there if you want to see something in more detail again or leave some feedback there yeah i hope you enjoyed the stream for today we will see us tomorrow tomorrow the stream will a little bit it is shorter but <laughs> a little bit shorter than two hours because i have to fetch my daughter from the kindergarten at 12 so i think for tomorrow we need to end the stream at uh, quarter to 12 so we have uh, uh, 50 minutes left <laughs> less than today but i think it's no problem so I hope to see you tomorrow. Was a good one. Bye bye.